Well, thank you for joining us on Kitchen Business. Tonight we'll be talking to key stakeholders in the tourism, commerce and also the trade industry. And with us in studio we have the Cabinet Secretary for EAC, Commerce and Tourism, Madam Phyllis Kandie. Welcome. Thank you. Um, joining us also is a key member of the East Africa Business Council, Mr. Kelly Kilu, who will be sharing with us some of the gains that they have managed to witness across the one year in office. Perhaps just to start with you, um, you've been in office for the last one and a half years. Um, key strides have been achieved as a government and also as a region, as one of the key partners and uh, within the region as the chair of the East Africa Community Council of Ministers. What are some of the highlights that you can speak of that you have realized since you came into office? Uh, thank you very much for that question. Let me just start by informing um, the Kenyan, Kenyans and uh, East Africans in uh, general that uh, 30th of uh, November, uh, meaning the end of this month, we will hold the summit of the East African community of which the chair is His Excellency, the President Uhuru uh, Kenyatta. And that is one year of um, the chairmanship of, of Kenya at the ESC. Now, we have, um, since we, um, we were given uh, the chairmanship one year ago, a lot has happened um, over, the, of, 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 over, over the year. Um, Across the board, um, you are talking about, you know, um, implementation of, um, you know, policies that um, were, uh, you know, uh, agreed upon uh, under the ESC treaty. Yeah. One of them is, in particular, is um, uh, to ease movement of goods and services across the border. What was agreed upon was the ESC um, uh, visa. Um, and three countries have implemented that protocol, that is Uganda, uh, Rwanda, and Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, within it also, it was agreed that we would use the national ID to uh, cross the borders. So that has really helped in the movement of, 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 of people across, across the border. Um, also, what, we've, what, what uh, has happened within, within that one year is um, the reduction of non-tariff barriers. Mm -hmm. Specifically, really, the reduction of the time that um, you know, goods take from Mombasa, for example, um, to Kampala and, uh, and also uh, Kigali. So those are some of the achievements uh, under uh, you know, the Common Market Protocol that I, s I can say um, you know, were achieved. But uh, luckily, we have here the business community. Perhaps they will comment on, you know, the effect or the effectiveness of of, of those um, uh, policies uh, in the uh, to the business community. The other one I'd like to talk about or highlight is, you know, to deepen um, the, the the integration process. We also ratified uh, the monetary union protocol. Um, and I think it's going through our parliament as we speak, but already Tanzania as parliament has ratified it um, and all the other member states. So um, that's something that will deepen um, our integration. Um, the, the other one that we have done also is um, we have ensured that um, the one-stop shop, uh, the one-stop border post, mm -hmm. Um, two are already working. Uh, one is uh, Taveta Lunga Lunga um, border post, yeah. which is working. And then the other one is um, at the border of uh, Rwanda and Uganda. It's called uh, Rusumba. Um, so those two are already working. But um, you know that there are plans to ensure that even across the border to, to Uganda and also um, through Namanga, we mm -hmm. will have one border post. Mm -hmm. Again, that is uh, you know, uh, it, is, it is envisaged or it, it, it helps the business community to transfer goods across, across the border. The other one that uh, we managed to push through um, just over uh, three weeks ago mm -hmm. is uh, the EPAS uh, negotiations with the European Union. Correct. Uh, for us, um, that was a very uh, important milestone uh, for the ESC. I, if you recall, this has 
this is a, a, a protocol that has been um, negotiated for the past 10 years and there was no agreement. Um, so finally, um, it is actually um, all the officials, the senior officials have um, uh, signed to that protocol mm -hmm. or rather initialed. So what's happening right now is uh, there is a cleanup of the document itself so that um, the ministers can now sign um, the agreement and then we will take it forward to parliaments uh, to ratify it. So in a nutshell, I could say those are the things that we have done ov over the past one year. I think the last, one that, uh, the last one that I'd like to talk about is the one area network. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important. Um, we realize that uh, you know, the roaming charges for uh, you know, our telephone has been very, very expensive, mm -hmm. prohibitive to business. And um, these negotiations have been going on, and actually um, Uganda and uh, uh, um, Rwanda and Kenya have agreed uh, to implement, uh, you know, uh, that, 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 that protocol. So f for us, that is something quite, um, th that should benefit uh, the business community. Uh, maybe if we bring in uh, Mr. Kilu, I'm speaking from a business community perspective. Has there been an impact along these lines where we are seeing um, more traders crossing borders using national IDs uh, instead of the passport. Yes, uh, exactly. There are quite a lot of people moving uh, across, particularly where the three partner states have agreed that uh, people can move with their own national identities. Therefore, you are seeing an increase in uh, movement of people and also of uh, goods. Uh, but more important, uh, perhaps, is to look at uh, what uh, the Cabinet Secretary has said. What have we realized? What is the impact of that? And indeed, um, if you reduce the cost of uh, uh, telephone, right, your roaming costs are removed, mm -hmm. then you can imagine what that means in the cost of doing business. At the same time, we have uh, targeted also to have one uh, media around East Africa. You don't have to, uh, to go and get licenses to operate in any of the partner states. That was actually very critical, particularly because of creating awareness of the value of regional integration. Mm -hmm. And it's something we are we're championing. Uh, at the same time, air travel, because yes, roaming costs go down, but if the cost of air travel from one partner state to the other doubles, yeah. uh, for example, if uh, all over it's about an hour, Whatever you travel in East Africa is one hour. Mm -hmm. Now, the costs of air travel is as, as though you are flying five hours to Dubai. Uh, so therefore, that's another area. We want it to be domesticated. We have asked for that. So far, they have done very well. Because you look at, um, since the rolling out of the Customs Union in 2005, uh, 2005 yeah. now up to now, that is nine years. And then in 2010, uh, that's when we agree the customs union becomes uh, effective and then the common market what is it we have realized yes there's a lot of achievements and um, good example is recently we had the east african uh, day at the nairobi international trade fair uh, this is the third time we have held it in kenya and uh, initially it was meant to spearhead uh, showing the potential inherent in the, the private sector in trade and in commerce, as, as well as in a social life. So that Kenyans, Ugandans, Tanzanians, Rwandese, and, uh, you know, and, the, and the Burundians can come together. And they start uh, having exhibitions to show their potential inherent in the region. And indeed, uh, the, this third one, the chief guest was the, the chair of the Council of Ministers, and uh, it was very successful. Uh, we intend to roll out this around East Africa mm -hmm. so that in each of the partner states like Dar es Salaam, they have a trade fair. Uh, Uganda, they have a trade fair in uh, Kampala. Uh, Bujubura, they have a trade fair. And uh, Rwanda, they have a trade fair in Kigali. So that every year we have an ESC day in each of those trade fairs. Uh, once you do that, you now synchronize the people's perception of East Africa you start creating much more impact in terms of the awareness of the potential inherent in the various whether it's sectors, whether it's agriculture, 
whether it's uh, in tourism, in trade, because trade fairs incorporate every aspect of the economy and mm -hmm. of course uh, social life. Uh, in addition, uh, we have worked in collaboration with the governments of East Africa in promoting um, small and micro enterprises in the region. Uh, every year we have um, small and micro enterprise exhibitions. This year it's going to be in Kigali uh, as part and parcel of this year's uh, celebrations. And uh, it's, it's big. It shows all the capacity of the small and micro enterprises mm -hmm. in, in East Africa. And this has been going on since uh, 1999. And therefore, you can see in the last 15 years, we have made uh, steps, quite uh, big steps. Now, one of the key uh, drivers of regional integration is the standard gauge rail, which again, if you look at uh, what is going on, already Kenya has started and they have signed a contra an agreement with Uganda and the Rwanda. And um, as we speak, it's already started from Mombasa. So the moment uh, it reaches Nairobi, the next uh, stage is from Nairobi to Malaba, and the Uganda then does their bid, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, Kigali does their thing. So therefore, at the end of the day, you can see the ease of movement of goods and uh, people. At let the same time, in, at a lower cost. Let me bring in the cabinet secretary. As much as um, there has been significant um, uh, shift in terms of facilitating traders to move across the borders, there still remains the issue of uh, the work permits, especially for Kenyans who are working in other countries within the region. And uh, traders have been uh, calling on the government to perhaps uh, strike agreements with these uh, member states. Um, what would be your position on this? Again, the way really uh, that happens on the ground is that um, you know, each country is given time to implement. We can't quite really force um, because it's allowed within the treaty. Uh, so what has happened is essentially uh, Rwanda and Kenya have actually moved very quickly in terms of implementing that. Um, and I think uh, you know, uh, there's a lot Uganda is doing um, and, and, and there are discussions at the ESC level um, even, you know, to, 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 to try to ease the movement of, of people because we know it's, it's, it's very important. Um, it's important because even, um, you know, the business community is, 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 they are negotiating at their own level. Um, you know, you, you, you've seen the lawyers already, you know, um, they can set up, uh, you know, businesses within the, within the partner states and so forth. So, th so their negotiations are different level, you know, um, if, for example, you know, the, the stock exchanges have their own negotiations mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. on and, and so forth. So we encourage that to happen. So at the policy level, we would really like to ease the movement so that uh, it's, it's easier for, for business to set up in any partner states. And and, 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 and expand their business. Because I asked this, um, there have been uh, complaints from uh, workers who are working in Tanzania and also Uganda as well. Um, they have lost out on business because some of them have had their business, uh, their work permits not being renewed and having to come back to their mother country. And this is an issue that perhaps um, they will be requiring uh, it to be fast tracked are we seeing any meetings being held to discuss this issue, especially with Tanzania? You see, we are discussing it at, at, the, at, at the minister's level. Um, you know, that, and, and I think in principle we've all agreed that that is the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it, at the end of the day, could be left to uh, bilateral negotiations. Um, you know, like uh, between Kenya and Uganda or between Kenya and Tanzania. So those are going on. Um, and, and, and I think it needs to be given time, but there's a general understanding, general pr principle that this is where East Africa is moving towards easing movement of goods and services and people. What are your views on this, Mr. King? Yes, it's correct, because you see, um, there are a lot of uh, issues around, uh, you know, allowing movement of people, but the principle is what you look at. Has it been agreed? Yes. In principle, that was agreed. And it's being rolled out because, um, if I recall, we agreed on that in 2010. Uh, but then it would be bilaterals initially because of uh, 
Uh, there are a lot of uh, investment issues involved, mm -hmm. uh, not just about allowing people, including each country has its own terms mm -hmm. of ownership of property and ownership of uh, land, and uh, therefore all these must be addressed as you go towards ultimately having one investment destination. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, uh, it's not something you do overnight, but the progress has uh, been ongoing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Madam CS, I'm looking at the same issue of um, the single tourist visa, and it has been in operation in the three countries so far. Um, what are some of the key highlights from this? Are we seeing increased revenues in terms of tourists coming through? What is the scene like? L let me first start by saying that um, we have um, agreed, or rather we are jointly promoting the single tourist visa, at least amongst the three countries again, uh, Rwanda, Uganda, and, um, and Kenya. In fact, I, I'm just from the World Tourism um, Market in London, mm -hmm. and we, we did a joint promotion. So as we continuously promote, because this is something new to the market, um, you know, about uh, what's going on in East Africa. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and as we continuously do joint marketing, I think um, you know the, 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 it, it, you know people are, or rather our visitors or tourists are beginning to you know be aware of of this new product um, or, or rather us showcasing East Africa as one destination and it's being received very well um, outside there. Um, I, I didn't come with the, with the actual data that we have right now, but what I'm hearing from our embassies abroad is that. Could, you know, increasingly the visa is being taken up because it gives a tourist an advantage and it's just not for the tourists who come in to look for leisure. Mm -hmm. We are also looking at um, a business tourist. That's the other angle of it. If they want to come and set up um, a head office in East Africa, they have an advantage of coming to, to Kenya, they go to Rwanda, they go to Uganda, then eventually they decide where they want to uh, put their headquarters. So it's an advantage in a way uh, for, for the tourists and because of that it gives East Africa a competitive edge um, you know in, in, in the world market. So it's been taken up very very well um, I must say and um, How soon are we likely to see Tanzania and uh, Burundi joining? <laughs> Good question. Um, again let me emphasize the fact that um, it's allowed within the treaty for any yeah. partner states to implement a protocol when they are ready. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, when you are in London, um, Tanzania did indicate that they will join um, the, you know, the, the ESC uh, visa. So we must give them time, really, to, 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 to make that decision and, and, and join in. Uh, uh, but um, you know, all the advantages are, are there for everyone to see, even for the tourists, and I think uh, that is the direction that East African is moving. Maybe winding thoughts from you, Mr. Kilu, um, looking at the outlook for the region and um, in terms of what does it look like for businesses that are intending to cross over to invest in other countries within the region? Already a lot of uh, East Africans uh, are moving and investing in different parts of East Africa. And you, you only need to go to the capitals and you meet people you know from here or from another place, even around here. So the, the regional integration is a process. Uh, what's important is, are we uh, following the laid, uh, the laid rules of, and regulations under the treaty of the ESC? Yes. And the process is working. It's awareness, sensitization of the peoples of East Africa that they need to know how far we've we gone, and like we are discussing now. What is it we have realized within the last uh, 14 years of ESC uh, integration? What is it which we need to uh, achieve? And in w the goals, have they been realized? Mm -hmm. And um, of course, creating awareness is uh, not an overnight matter. Mm -hmm. And so far, East Africans, because when I started, if I recall, um, you could go to places and people wonder where you're from. Today, they don't ask. They move. And today, people decide what they want. And uh, once they go to whichever destination to go and invest, they have partners. Uh, they get partners from each of these partner states. 
and they invest together. And um, so long as you follow the laid down uh, rules and regulations of EAC, and which therefore the, are driven by the organs of the community. Uh, Yala has a big role to play, and perhaps maybe because she's a member of the East African Legislative Assembly, she can mention what they have achieved uh, so far. Because we've run out of time, CS, um, what should you expect moving forward? Tangible solutions for traders, for businessmen across the region? I think for, 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 for me, um, we just need to um, really, at, at, at government level or at ESC level, is to set the right po policies, the right environment for, for business. And I think a lot has been done. What I would like to um, tell the business community and also Wananchi in general is that you, th there are opportunities within East Africa. Don't confine yourself to just trade within Kenya. Um, and and, and, and um, a lot is going on in terms of, um, you know, what you can do um, with, with potential partners within the other partner states. Um, and, and so, whereas when you talk about now export, you know, exporting could be exporting to Uganda. You could be exporting to Rwanda. Um, it's not about exporting to Europe or, you know, uh, any other countries uh, abroad. Um, we treat now East African community as a domestic market. It's, we've made it so easy for you to travel across the border. You don't need a passport. You can use your ID. Um, and, and, and you know, you're speaking in, when you go across the borders, you speak in Swahili, which is quite easy. You could um, make, make that mix, you, you know, your negotiations or, you know, um, um, engaging a partner or potential partner or selling your goods across the border would be easier. So I'd want to encourage um, people to try to um, explore what this East African community offers East Africans. And I promise you, uh, we can increase trade amongst each other, we can trade more with each other, um, and, 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 and um, everybody uh, will benefit from it. Thank you very well, maybe much. Maybe I can mention that um, the structure of ESC, there is the government, which is uh, the organs, the secretariat, and uh, the council of ministers, and the IALA, which is the legislature, and the uh, court of justice. Now, uh, in the treaty of the ESC, uh, under Article 5 to 7, uh, it, they are clearly articulated that is people centered and private sector driven. Thank you very and much. And therefore the private sector plays its role today. Uh, we have um, actually uh, structured such that East African Business Council, which is the umbrella body, sits in the Council of Ministers, it sits uh, in Yala, it has all forums of East Africa, works with the Secretariat of East Africa, because that, that's the economic pillar of the East African community. And uh, here in Kenya, uh, KEPSA is a focal point. KEPSA being the umbrella body for the private sector in Kenya is a focal point for East African Business Council. So we work uh, very closely with the governments of East Africa to ensure what is not uh, realized is brought uh, to the fore and therefore everybody is able to address those concerns. And now from where it started to where it is today, uh, you can ask anybody, and I agree with her, that um, if you go to Burundi, for example, you feel at home. You don't feel like, where am I? Mm -hmm. If a Burundian comes here, they like coming here, or Rwandese, so they have no problem. And that is what regional integration is, is uh, the people themselves, first of all, recognizing and appreciating that uh, the rules, the laws of the land are now, uh, you know, synchronized, so that they address not the national, by the regional integration. Thank you very yeah. much. Indeed, that's a good place to end it. We've been speaking to Cabinet Secretary for EAC Affairs and Commerce and Tourism, Philip Scandier, and also we've had the pleasure of having EABC um, member, Mr. Kilu. Well, that's all we had for you today. Do join us next week, same time.